In many ways, the history of Nosgoth is defined by the conflict between the humans and the vampires. With their shared ancient history long forgotten, successive groups of vampire hunters sprang up to combat vampire threats to human populations, each attempting to finally wipe out the undead scourge of the vampire menace once and for all. This time on the Arcane Tomes, we'll be examining some of these vampire hunting orders, continuing with perhaps the most unusual, the Hildenbat New Seraphan Order of the post-Blood Omen era. We have already covered some of this topic in our video on the Hilden incursion, so we'll link that video in the description as well. This order of vampire hunters was not to be confused with the previous legendary Seraphan order of Nosgoth's early history. Despite sharing the same name, the orders were distinct and with the later order explicitly formed and set up to copy the previous order. The new Seraphan Order was seen only in Blood Omen 2 and only existed in the most recent iteration of history, where the order originated in and was apparently finished in the post-Blood Omen era. They were seen in the introduction to the game as the order that stopped Cain's path for conquest and were ultimately responsible for Cain's apparent death. When Cain returned, it was revealed that the Seraphim had conquered Nosgoth in his absence. As such, the troops of the Seraphim provided the majority of the enemies for Cain's encounters in Blood Omen 2, and they were a constant threat through the game with only locations that lacked human activity missing a Seraphan presence. Like the other vampire hunting orders it succeeded, the Seraphan greatly reduced the number of vampires to only a handful of individuals. But its end marked a resurgence in the vampire threat and the birth of Cain's empire. The new Seraphan were a product of the timeline changes at the end of Soul Weaver 2, and as such, they only exist in the most recent iteration of history that includes the events of Defiance and Blood Omen 2, and consisted of historical alterations in the Blood Omen era that led to a greatly altered post-Blood Omen era. In the preceding versions of history, Cain had been the sole survivor of his race, and so the post-Blood Omen era was a relatively uneventful age. However, in the most recent timeline, the resurrection of two vampires in the Blood Omen and post-Blood Omen eras led to a number of changes that altered the face of the centuries after Blood Omen. At the end of the Blood Omen era, the Hilden Lord was able to gain possession of the resurrected Janus Aldrin and used his magic and possibly the Nexus Stone, to open the Hilden Gate to attempt to start a Hilden invasion. But they lacked the power for a full assault and required humans to drain of energy, so they decided on a slower and more subversive strategy of conquest. Meanwhile, the as yet unexplained resurrection of Vorador afforded Cain a somewhat reluctant ally one who could create vampires himself. And so with Vorador's help, Cain created a vampire army, his first attempt to subjugate Nosgoth. With the Hilden Lord planning to uncover the ancient Hilden weapon known as the Device beneath the human city of Meridian, he travelled to the city in disguise and heard about the threat posed to the humans by a new vampire army. But he also heard tales about a legendary vampire hunting order of centuries past, known as the Seraphan, that had crusaded against the vampires. Inspired by this order, 
the Hilden Lord formed a new vampire hunting order and named it Seraphan in honor of the previous brotherhood. In a bid to inspire the humans to rise up against the vampire threat, and he took on a new identity in the process, that of the Seraphan Lord. Over several years, the Seraphan Lord sponsored the human efforts in Meridian, presumably supplying them with weapons and training. And with this came some more subtle Hilden knowledge and technology, including a power source known as Glyph Magic, which drastically evened the playing field between the humans and the vampires. By the time the vampire army was on the warpath, two centuries after the collapse of the pillars, the new Seraphan were a formidable force that had apparently built and fortified the city and stood ready to defend Meridian at all costs. With a strongly defended fortress, the Seraphan Keep at the heart of their influence. With the vampire army advancing on Meridian, the Seraphan Lord didn't leave the battle to chance. He conspired with one of Cain's disloyal and ambitious lieutenants, Sebastian, to arrange an ambush of the army outside Meridian. And when the night before the battle, Cain's champion Magnus attempted to assassinate him, he had Magnus banished to the Eternal Prison, depriving Cain of two of his biggest strengths. At the same time, he ensured that he had in his possession the Nexus Stone, an item which could negate the powers of the Soul Reaver Blade, thereby depriving Cain of his most powerful weapon. Sebastian's ambush was triggered, and the Vampire Army found the massed ranks of the renewed Seraphan Order waiting for them outside Meridian. As the two armies clashed in the Battle of Meridian, it was the glyph magic and training of the Seraphan that won through, and Cain was isolated from his army and locked in single combat with the Seraphan Lord on a clifftop. Unable to use the power of the Soul Reaver, it was the Seraphan Lord that triumphed, knocking Cain off a cliff to his apparent demise. The vampire army was routed, and few survived. Some, like legionnaire Faustus, were spared in exchange for hunting down the survivors of the army, while others, such as Marcus, who never officially joined the army, freely offered their service to the Seraphan. These traitor vampires became valuable tools for hunting down the remains of the army and were presumably a large propaganda victory for the Order. The remains of the army were able to recover Cain's near lifeless body, and they retreated into hiding, all the while being hunted to near extinction once again. For the next two centuries, the Seraphan used their new tools and power to expand their influence. Far from a simple vampire hunting order like their predecessors, they became a military power, and with the Seraphan Lord as their leader, they gradually conquered Nosgoth, installing an authoritarian regime ruled absolutely by the Seraphan Lord. The remains of the vampire army slowly changed into a secretive resistance movement known as the Cabal which sought to undermine the Order and fuel human resistance to Seraphan rule. After nearly two centuries of Seraphan power, vampire numbers were reduced to a handful, facing increasingly difficult odds. And into this background, they took the decision to revive Cain, despite their fears about Cain's ambition. Cain's introduction to the Cabal cause was disastrous for the Seraphan. He quickly came into conflict with the Seraphan guards of Meridian and set about targeting the traitor vampires. He infiltrated the Seraphan keep 
to save Cabal vampire Uma from execution. He made his way through and ultimately destroyed the main factory of the industrial quarter to gain the Nexus Stone, and he blazed a path through the wharves, dispatching many of the Saraphan's finest warriors. The biggest blow, however, was Cain's undermining of the secretive Hilden plans. Cain's singular pursuit of revenge against the Saraphan Lord led him to nullify the device and across the seas to the Hilden city, where he reversed the roles in the Battle of Meridian and used the Nexus Stone to prevent a Hilden invasion through the Hilden Gate. Ultimately, it was there that he killed the Saraphan Lord in single combat. The Saraphan were now leaderless, and Cain's power was once again on the rise. While the exact demise of the Order was not seen, with Cain determined to wipe them out, it would seem that the days of the Order were numbered. And within a century, Cain's raising of the previous Seraphan lieutenants as his favoured sons would set the stage for the establishment of his empire and the dawn of the Soulweaver era. Never again would humans threaten vampires with extinction in quite the same way. The legacy of the new Seraphan is more complicated than that of its predecessors. Like the other vampire hunting orders, the new Seraphan was successful in greatly reducing vampire numbers. However, it arose in a time when the vampires had just been reduced to a single individual and then rapidly replenished to provide an army. The Seraphan defeat of this army inevitably resulted in a large drop in vampire numbers and the continued campaign of hunting the Cabal essentially consisted of mopping up the stragglers and returning the vampires to the endangered species list. By the end of the game, it appears that with the rise of Cain's ambition in his plans for empire, neither the Seraphan or this generation of vampires may have lasted for much longer. With the faction only appearing in one timeline, its impact could be considered lesser than the other vampire hunting orders. Indeed, in the previous versions of the timeline, the vampire race had been reduced to a single individual in this period, so the faction served to limit the vampire numbers in an era where they would almost inevitably be wiped out again soon. While the faction was active, there was heavy propaganda and lionization of the order, with numerous posters, signs, statues and iconography related to the order. However, this approach does not seem to have been followed after the end of the order, with few tributes to it apparent in later years. This could be credited to limited views of the time periods after the order, especially in the relevant timeline, or to the order not being fondly remembered due to its overtly authoritarian takeover of the land. The new Seraphan are somewhat unique among the vampire hunting orders, in that none of the leaders of the order were actually human. In fact, some of the higher ranking members were vampires. The leader of the order was the Seraphan Lord, a high ranking Hilden general who is also known as the Hilden Lord. He is the being that ultimately masterminded the Hilden escape from the demon realm in the post-Blood Omen era. Using Cain and Raziel as pawns, he was responsible for the corruption of the Pillars whilst in possession of Mortanius, and baited Raziel into resurrecting legendary ancient vampire Janos Aldrin. From there, he took possession of Janos, and after defeating Raziel, he used Janos' magic to open the Hilden Gate and slowly built up the Hilden Presence back in the Material Realm. The Seraphan Lord founded the new Seraphan Order when he travelled to Meridian seeking to uncover the device, 
and heard of the advance of the vampire army, and the stories of an ancient vampire hunting order known as the Sarafan, which he used to inspire the new order. The Sarafan Lord would ultimately be killed by Cain above the Hilden Gate, as Cain stopped the Hilden incursion. His death would begin the unravelling of the order, and they apparently ceased to exist soon after. The Hilden Lord in his Sarafan Lord guise was memorialised in the murals of the Sarafan Keep, and a statue in the canyons beyond Meridian appeared to depict him and suggested his form as an inspiration for the symbol of the new Sarafan. Beneath the Seraphan Lord were various Hilden figures of the Hilden Conspiracy. Though not officially part of the Seraphan, they would arguably be considered by the Seraphan Lord to be more trustworthy and higher ranked than the vampires and humans below them. The only way they were seen by others was in the guise of the Glyphrites, a supposed secret society that maintained the Glyphs of Meridian. Whilst in that guise, they never spoke to humans, but they did appear, on occasion, to speak to traitor vampires. The rest of the known individual leadership of the Sarafan was made up of traitor vampires. Arguably, the highest ranking of these was Sebastian. He appeared to be something of a leader among the vampire army, but after being lured in by the Seraphan Lord's promises of power, he betrayed the army, organising the ambush that cost Cain the Battle of Meridian. After the war, Sebastian appeared to be the highest and most trusted of the Seraphan Lord's traitor vampires, even being aware of the device, and he believed that he was to rule Nosgoth alongside the Seraphan Lord. However, this appears to be something of wishful thinking on his part. After being revived, Cain briefly met Sebastian in the lower city before confronting and killing him in the main factory of the industrial quarter. The next in line of the traitor vampires was Marcus. Despite being part of Vorador's brood of vampires, Marcus was apparently not a part of Cain's vampire army. Cain had asked him to join, but he seemed to have been turned down, with Cain subsequently making an attempt on his life. Despite appearances, he was almost certainly not present at the Battle of Meridian, and only emerged afterward to offer himself to the winning side, and coming to serve the Seraphan as a traitor vampire. Cain eventually caught up and dispatched Marcus inside Meridian Cathedral in the Upper City. The final of the Seraphan vampires was Faustus. A legionnaire in Cain's army, Faustus fought in the Battle of Meridian, but sold himself to the Seraphan in the aftermath of the battle in a bid to save his own life. And through this, he gained a small measure of power as he worked to hunt down the remaining vampires in the intervening years. When Cain was revived, Faustus was the first traitor vampire to be shown, and he followed Cain from the slums to the smuggler's den before he revealed himself, with Cain promptly killing him. One more supposed traitor vampire was seen in Blood Omen 2. However, Magnus was never a part of the Seraphan, and was counted as a traitor vampire merely because of his antagonistic actions towards Cain in the Eternal Prison, where his madness and his imprisonment clouded his judgement. Offhand NPC dialogue makes mention of a Chancellor of a Meridian that resided in the Seraphan Keep. It's unclear where this ranking would relate to the rest of the Order, and the real-world meaning of the title does vary, but it could be taken as an alternative title of the Seraphan Lord, 
or that of another high-ranking human official. Background materials for the cancelled Nosgoth multiplayer would suggest that the usage of the title for the leaders of Meridian would continue long after the end of the Seraphan. The rest of the new Seraphan were made up of the various enemy classes, and while some were of unclear ranking, there were some aspects that clearly indicated a structure. These are the regular Seraphan guards, and the lowest ranked of the Seraphan scene. They were encountered by Cain in the lower areas of Meridian, and came armed with swords. The next most senior class were the Glyph Guards, who were encountered from the lower city onward. Initially they were armed with swords, but increasingly became armed with dual-bladed swords later on. The Glyph Guards also came with a special power. Their armour was infused with some type of glyph magic, and would glow when the vampire was in proximity, giving them a powerful tool to detect vampires. A more powerful version of the basic guards were the Seraphan Knights, who bore long axes and heavy armour which protected them against special attacks like decapitations. They were stronger and more resilient than previous classes, but were also more prone to exhaustion. However, they could also crouch to recover and effectively avoid attacks while doing so. Several variants coloured in different patterns could be observed. Arguably the highest ranked of the rank and file troops were the Glyph Knights, who were effectively a combination of the Seraphan Knights and the Glyph Guards. They bore similar armour to the Seraphan Knights along with a red cloak, which protected them from decapitations. But the armour was also infused with Glyph magic like the Glyph Guards, giving them greater protection and a way to detect hidden vampires. They were typically armed with heavy broadswords, and a special shield-like armour plate on their arms was used for defence. They seemed to guard the most heavily defended strongholds, such as the Seraphan Keep and the Wolves. The Seraphan Archers were the long-range combat specialists of the Seraphan, Whereas the other classes were exclusively male, the archers were exclusively female and were relatively scantily clad, with minimal protection. They were armed with crossbows and swords and tended to hang back, firing flaming arrows from a distance. The Seraphan also seemed to employ mercenaries to aid their cause, with several classes, both male and female, labelled as such and they could often be seen teamed with the Seraphan in locations such as the Industrial Quarter, the Canyons, and the Wharves. Though less armoured than regular Seraphan guards, they were typically stronger, more agile, and better armed, although arguably far less disciplined. The male mercenaries bore swords with wrist-mounted shields, while the females used short axes. Seraphan priests were perhaps the most difficult Seraphan affiliated class to pin down. They were only seen in the upper city under the control of Marcus and appeared to be religious officials associated with Meridian Cathedral. Besides this, there's very little connecting them to the rest of the order, and only the naming, symbols on their clothing, and the use of the Seraphan symbol scepters provided clues. One last pseudo seraphan enemy is seen in the Wharves level, with the presence of the gunship. Given the seraphan presence protecting the area, it seemed the gunship was likely seraphan affiliated, and patrolled the waters around the final section of the level, rapid firing arrows at intruders. The new Seraphan Order is represented by a distinct symbol of a broken ankh-like cross. 
The cross is one of several parts of Blood Omen 2 that actually originated in previous work lead Steve Ross had done for the cancelled titles Shukan 2 and Sirens, with the cross clearly visible in concepts for those titles. In a similar manner to the clan symbols for Soul Reaver, the symbol seems in-universe to have been based upon the silhouette of the Saraphan Lord, with his legs, arms and shoulder pieces represented. A large Saraphan cross carved into the walls of the canyons makes this link even more apparent by combining the symbol with a silhouette of a figure, presumably the Saraphan Lord. The symbol is used throughout Blood Omen 2 in a number of creative variants, making far more varied appearances than the straightforward banners of other orders. On occasion, the new Seraphan symbols and imagery take clear influence from Roman and Nazi iconography. Similar influence was seen in the legions of the Nemesis and Mobius's mercenary army, both predecessors of the new Seraphan. In a similar manner to the previous orders, this seems designed to aid the impression of a repressive authoritarian regime with few freedoms. The symbol does have some similarities to the symbol of the Eternal Prison that's seen in that level. And that coupled with the Seraphan Lord's ease in sending Magnus to the prison could imply some sort of connection between the Seraphan and the Eternal Prison. Or more likely, the Hilden and the Eternal Prison. Although the exact nature of such a connection is not elaborated upon, and it could simply be a coincidence or an earlier discarded concept. What may be an earlier version of the symbol, with the cross part atop the shoulder pieces, can be seen in earlier concept arts. The look of the Seraphan, like most of the visuals of Blood Omen 2, was intentionally designed to recall those of Blood Omen and Soul Reaver, to look like it was a few centuries evolved from Blood Omen and on the path towards what was coming in Soul Reaver, and to show some of the ruined Soul Reaver technologies at the height of their powers. As such, much of Blood Omen 2 took the medieval feel of Blood Omen and pushed it forward to the Victorian era, with the Seraphan designed to emulate the original Seraphan order, but with a more industrial and technological feel. The use of glyph magic and energy gave the Seraphan an important edge over vampire populations. Though the exact mechanisms are not properly described, it seems that the magic was initially brought to Nosgoth by the Hilden and the Seraphan Lord and was used as an offensive magic in some form, before being harnessed and incorporated into the armours of the Seraphan troops, allowing them to detect vampires through glowing designs on the surface. This usage can be seen as far back as the Battle of Meridian. In the years that followed, Another glyph implementation arose as the Seraphan raised a network of glyphs which could potentially be derived from glyph magic as a way to provide so-called glyph energy. This functioned like a slower moving electrical current and allowed homes to be lit and warmed. This energy, along with an industrial revolution, gave the Seraphan a powerful tool to win over populations and this shaped the city of Meridian. However, its ultimate purpose was to provide a network for the mass and the device to project onto in an act of genocide, which came disabled by killing the mass before it could be used. Many of the actions of the traitor vampires, particularly with respect to the Battle of Meridian seen in the introduction, appear disputed or contradictory in the final game. The opening scene, for example, shows Marcus partaking in the massacres of the army, and several copies of Sebastian taking part in the battle alongside Cain, despite both being said to be absent in later dialogue. Cut script excerpts that didn't make it into the final game 
go further on these revelations and cast further doubt on the intro cutscene. These excerpts reveal that Marcus had refused Kane's invitation and Kane had then attempted to murder him in his own coffin while he slept. Magnus, who is only seen as a wretch of the eternal prison, was to have been shown in his full state as Kane's champion. Sebastian's betrayal was to have been shown and Sebastian would have a few extra final words which can still be accessed in the final game with the right tools. Perhaps after all we will go to the grave together. <laughs> As mentioned previously the Saraphan and a number of other themes in Blood Omen 2 were heavily influenced by the previous cancelled projects of Blood Omen 2 lead Steve Ross. In the mid to late 90s, Steve worked on a Quake Engine title known as Sirens, before moving on and working on a sequel to the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive title Shokan the Forever Man. Both projects ended up cancelled, however their atmosphere and Steve Ross's distinctive artistic style prompted interest from Crystal Dynamics, who signed him up for Blood Omen 2. As a result of the heavy workload and taking on many roles, the trademark style of Ross and the influences of previous projects bled through into Blood Omen 2, with a number of concepts and ideas bearing strong similarity to the previous projects, including many resembling Seraphat classes. However, it's worth noting that this doesn't mean that Blood Omen 2 literally started life as these other titles. In the years since, no concrete link between the titles had been established and several employees have come forward specifically to refute this possibility, with many, including Ross himself, openly admitting to unintentionally mirroring patterns and themes from previous cancelled titles, rather than deliberately taking and repurposing assets from another company. Blood Omen 2 opens up a bit of a can of worms on the spelling of the Seraphan for this order. The previous Seraphan order was generally spelt as S-A-R-A-F-A-N, with only occasional sources referring to an S-E-R-A variant. This order, however, seems to be generally spelt in universe and pronounced by several characters as S-E-R-A-P-H-A-N. However, many sources, including title screens, guides and script, persist with the classic Seraphan spelling. As this is explicitly not the same order, but a new order taking the name in honour of the previous order, it could be considered that the spelling has changed or become standardised in a different way. As with the previous order, the Seraphan name is ultimately inspired by the biblical Seraphim, who were quite literally angels of the light. Numerous Blood Omen 2 Seraphan imagery could be found in promotional materials and artist portfolios, some reflecting early designs, with several appearing in the credits of the game. Among these are early designs for the Seraphan Lord, the Hilden, the Demons, the Glyphrites, and the Traitor Vampires, and of course, many for the Seraphan enemy classes. Many of these images provide some interesting insight into the design process, with some aspects notably cut from the final game. These include the design that became the Glyphrites apparently associated with the Prison Guardian class, what became the Seraphan Archers presented with a rapier-like sword and shield rather than a crossbow, a much bulkier and more imposing design for the Glyph Knights, and an unknown class with a bare chest covered in Seraphan tattoos and armed with a flail-like weapon. This class was presumably either cut or completely redesigned. We hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And join us next time as we look to the far future and the last of the Vampire Hunting Orders. The Vampire Hunters of the Soul Weaver Era.